How you doing today, sir? I'm good, man. How are you? I'm doing excellent. Uh, I think I'm. I think people are going to start calling. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> but I don't know what that's about. <laughs> well, look, he's a shapeshifter. That's all I could say. Yeah, exactly. Uh, I'll get into that in a second, but I'll be very vague about whatever the hell I just said. Uh, well, people will watch that and be like, "What the hell is he talking about?" Yeah. And then in a few weeks, it'll make a lot more sense. Yeah. Anyway, um, so how have you been enjoying? Uh, I, I like throwing the curveball. Yeah, it's how, tremendous. Yeah. How, how have you been enjoying curve. this? promotional kind of thing because obviously when you got the gig you're on set you're doing the acting did you realize you're gonna be flying the planet like talking to literally everybody no I didn't truly um, you know I think every job every gig you get you just think okay what's the what's the part in front of me how do I play this part to the best of my ability and um, and and do a good job and not suck basically <laughs> and then um, and then suddenly, you know, in a way people try and prepare you for, people say, you know, Ken said, the day that we wrapped, Ken took me and Chris aside and said, um, prepare yourselves for 12 months from now, um, the world will be watching. And we were like, what do you mean? <laughs> he went, trust me, the world will be watching. So it's just so exciting. I mean, I, this film has been two years of my life. I first auditioned in January 2009, and it's the 1st of May 2011. And... Um, I'm so proud of it. I'm so proud of, of what Ken Branagh has achieved. I'm so proud of Chris. He thinks absolutely monumental in this part. Um, and um, I'm just proud to be part of it. So, I, it's I was, exciting. I was going to say, I think you're both fantastic in the movie. And I especially like your portrayal of Loki because generally the villain is always the weakest freaking part of every movie. <laughs> right, right. And you actually have a, uh, it's a solid villain with a three-dimensional kind of a thing. You know? Well, I'm so pleased to hear you say that, man. It, it's, um, you know, uh, Ken and I love complexity, I think. Part, part, of the, um, part of the reason that we are actors is, is there's a sort of, um, there's a psychological aspect to it, or at least a, um, it's, it's a bit like 3D anthropology or something. You, you are inhabiting um, your understanding and experience of humanity just in lots of different forms every character you take on you're filtering somebody else's truth and um, and with Loki I honestly thought that was the most interesting way to go is you know no no single being on this planet is any one thing we're all capable of of, of extremes extreme joy extreme pain extreme anger um, delight we're all mischievous but we're all um, loving at the same time and I think um, trying to root all of, of Loki's credentials as a bad guy um, in some kind of psychological damage was the only the only way to go so well the other thing though is it was imperative that your that Loki delivered the goods in this movie because he and you can finally now talk about the fact that you're in the Avengers I can and Thank God. In, yeah exactly and the I fact that like if, if, if he doesn't work in Thor there's a huge problem in future movies, <laughs> like it's, it's yeah. a foundation. Yeah, I guess you're right. Um, you know? Yeah, I, I, I kind of wasn't thinking that far ahead, but um, uh, yeah, it's it's. Um, I mean, it's just amazing. I when I first auditioned for this film, I never would have imagined that that, that I would be playing such an ex sort of iconic character. You know, the character is so much bigger than me, um, and it's such a pleasure to kind of to dig around in all of his very complicated stuff. Um, He's, um, you know, he's brilliant. He's, he's, uh, if he, if he actually existed, I'd like to meet him. You know, his, the fierce intelligence that he has, and, and sort of mastery of magic, and, and his kind of like ridiculous, um, uh, kind of fascistic, autocratic tendencies. Um, you know, he needs a lot of Prozac and a lot of therapy, but, um, but he's a friend of mine. Uh, how, uh, talk a little bit about. Uh how did you do anything different? You obviously prepared a certain way to get ready for Thor. You read yeah. the comics. You did all that kind of stuff. Yeah. As an actor, you are literally, I don't know if you've started filming, but they've started filming like a week ago on, you're playing the character again and yeah. most likely playing him again uh, down the road. Yeah. How much preparation for you is there in, you know, when you're playing the same character again like a year later? Is there a lot of preparation or you sort of, you can just flip it back on? Uh, well, he, you know, he's a little bit, he's a little bit further advanced in a way. He's not, at the beginning of Thor, Loki starts in a particular place. By the end of, of, of 
Thor, the movie, Loki has learned a hell of a lot, and he's done and undone a hell of a lot, and, um, and there's a lot of space between the end of Thor and the beginning of the Avengers where Loki has, I think, seen and done a few things. And I actually sat down for an amazing afternoon with Joss Whedon, um, and we talked, it was right as, as soon as I'd finished shooting Thor, and he said, um, it's fresh in your mind, who is this guy, give me everything. Um, and we sat down and, and sort of just just swapped stories about what we thought, you know, and um, it's, it's extraordinary. Um, I, cause I was just so full of him. I was, he, he was almost coming out of my ear holes, um, Loki. He was, I was sort of, I'd lived and breathed him for six months, and I think Joss was kind of capitalizing on my take in that. And um, I think it's just, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll slide right back in, but I'll slide in on, on a different angle. I think his plans have changed. He's now thinking a lot bigger. Um, it's not just about beating his brother or winning his father's affection. I'm not sure he cares anymore about, about um, all that Asgard stuff. I think um, he's got much, much bigger plans. Universal plans, if you I will. I would say so, yeah. Uh, I definitely, I'm, I'm running out of time with you, so I definitely have to ask you, and I'll do a two-parter. Okay. What was it like to work with Spielberg, and what was it like to work with Woody Allen? Uh, Steven Spielberg is a genius. Um, I mean, we did already know that, um, but he's, uh, I have to say that watching the speed of his creative execution is, is, is quite, quite brilliant. Um, he has such a handle on, on drama and storytelling. Um, he, he's never indulging uh, a performance or a stunt just because it looks cool or, 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 or someone's doing a nice piece of acting. He's like, he, he, every single moment he is asking the question, how can this further the story? And he's got the audience's interests at heart all the time, constantly talking about the audience. We mustn't tell the audience this, show, don't tell. Um, really amazing, a dream come true. I, drew up, I, I grew up watching E.T., Jaws, Indiana Jones. Um, and uh, he's a master. Secondarily, Woody Allen. Um, Woody writes a very, very finely tuned script. Um, I only got sent my specific pages. Um, they were absolutely extraordinary pages for um, just because of who the guy is. And, um, uh, you know, he, he, Woody has a twinkle in his eye. He's the most prolific film director, I think, still working today. He makes a film every year. And um, he said, he wrote me a letter, said, would you like to come to Paris and play this part? Um, we're shooting it in the summer. You'll be working with Owen Wilson and Anderson Pill. Um, I mean, it took me about 0.001 of a second to say yes. Um, but I loved it. It was great. Yeah. Uh, I say congratulations on everything. i got to wrap with you. Let me hit stop. Okay.